Shalom, party people, and welcome to the 12th C. It is December 11, 2022, approximately 45-ish degrees Fahrenheit at, uh, oh, what time was it? I guess it was 7.30 this morning when I ran one mile in seven minutes. Uh, walking, stretching, just kind of taking it easy. I originally intended to run a little bit further than that. I was hoping to do four or five this morning, and then I looked at my watch, and I was like, oh, I got places to be this morning. So I uh, did a quick sprint, and then I uh, got in some walking and stretching, uh, a little bit of calisthenics here and there, but just mostly trying to recover a little bit today, um, which was a command decision, I guess. I'm going to hit the grind hard tomorrow, and we'll, we'll go from there. But um, all in all, feeling pretty good. Um, I did um, chicken flavored crackers, some turkey and some cheese for breakfast. This morning I did uh, uh, beef cube steak with mashed potatoes, gravy, and uh, green beans for lunch and then had a smorgasbord for dinner uh, mostly it was deer chili and chicken rice uh, and then i had some you know mixed vegetables i guess and uh, a couple of sugar-free crackers and some cheese uh, a little bit of turkey slices all in all just i ate way too much tonight that was 100 percent on me i we'll see where tomorrow goes but i'm gonna try and portion control a lot more. My diet for uh, my next cycle of 75 heart is going to include some serious portion control on top of intake of certain things. So we'll share more details about that in the foreseeable future. But just a reminder to anyone who would like to participate in 75 hard with me next cycle will begin January 1 and we'll go through halfway through March. So we'll make that fun. and Have a good time. Um, all in all, um, just trucking as best I can. Did uh, the rest of Revelation today. So what was it, Revelation 13 through 22? Uh, my my plan is to do the uh, next couple of days. I'll just go through Genesis, and I may do um, a few extra chapters a day, so that way I can just do the whole book of Genesis in the next few days, um, all 50 chapters and four days. Um, so what's that? 12 to 13 chapters a day. Probably do that. Uh, been working through resistance operating concepts. Uh, finally finished chapter two and worked my way into chapter three. Uh, a couple of things that I would like to read and pontificate on a little bit. So the, this is out of chapter two, and this is on restoration of sovereignty, stability of operational considerations. What basically, when you are going in and you have won your resistance movement, your rebel alliance, or whatever, the empire's been defeated, and it's time to uh, make sure you've got good continuity of government and start setting things up. <clears throat> The government must anticipate that the post-resistance phase may not resemble its prior internal political balance of power, and many internal societal relationships will not return to the exact same status quo. Relationships within the nation regarding certain prior within certain portions of the population, groups, individuals that supported the aggressor will need to be addressed. The social fabric itself may have been damaged by the internal actions of the enemy, as well as by some resistance operations, authorized or otherwise. The government should plan towards a unity of purpose among all resistance participants and all segments of the population. And I also want to read, this one's out of chapter 3, this one's on preparedness. Once a plan is formulated, it becomes part of the preparedness cycle. The cycle has several activities, plan, organize, equip, train, exercise, and evaluate, and improve. This cycle, or a similar method, is vital to understanding and improving potential resistance, or yeah, potential resistance, thus to increase national resilience. So breaking that down, I, I've got, I'm going to try not to make this a soapbox rant, but 
I was given a little bit of advice today that I need to share some more personal anecdotes because, I mean, you guys can read these books if you want, and it's more of half the reason you're coming to this channel is hopefully to get some of my thoughts on some things. So stability of government. Obviously, I haven't been through a revolution. Obviously, I just, you know, seen what I've seen in movies. Um, but um, without sharing a ton of information, because there's certain things that um, well, I'm not, I'm not certain, um, the, you know, what I can and can't like officially share, um, on some of this, but I can speak in some generalities. So, um, previous job, I was in a corrections environment and I had the opportunity to, uh, do some things that not everybody got to do. And some of those things in, in turn, I guess, um, uh, meant that I got to go and, and, uh, um, when people weren't acting right, I got to go help make sure that they were behaving. And if they weren't behaving, then we would remove them from the situation, um, and put them somewhere else. And sometimes they would get organized with how they were misbehaving and we would go in and break up that organization and we would make sure everybody was behaving and then we would go from there. Um, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about anything that may um, be a standard operating procedure. I don't want to talk about anything that's more OPSEC type stuff. But speaking in, in generalities, um, we would have situations where um, several people would, would be organized in their disobedience um, or their, you know, aggression towards the system or whatever. And sometimes these uh, protests or whatever... Uh, Sometimes these were on semi-legitimate grounds, like something that was supposed to be happening wasn't happening. Or sometimes that, uh, hey, we have certain rights and we're not getting everything that we're entitled to. Um, or maybe certain things that we weren't supposed to be doing as the corrections environment that we were doing. So we were breaking some rules. And these individuals were upset about that. And so, you know, rightfully so, they're going to be upset. But just because they're upset doesn't mean that they have the right to, you know, go in and spread hate and discontent and break things and hurt people. Um, and, and really, I personally drew the line at if you're hurting people, like that's a no-go for me. And we're going to come in there fast and hard and you're not going to have a fun day. So that part of it, I guess. Um, but when, when we were going through all of this, um, you know, the situation would eventually calm down because um, we had the ability to come in in shifts. And um, once one group got to a certain point, then we would rotate them out in fresh legs. And when the people who were being disobedient um, could no longer continue, because we'd just essentially continue closing in perimeter until they, you know, you got to sleep eventually, you got to eat eventually. And by law, we got to feed them. By law, we got to make sure that they have access to running water and a whole bunch of other things. But um, there's certain protocol where if they're misbehaving in certain ways, then, you know, there are some things that we can be a little bit flexible on. But we got to feed them. Um, we got to make sure that they're they're okay. We got to have make sure that they have access to medical care. Um, but sometimes for them to have access to some of those things, they have to come in and say, hey, I'm not going to... Um, act this way because we have to have safety for um, everybody involved. And if we have to deliver something to them and it's unsafe for us to do that, then, you know, safety comes first. So that that's part of it too. It's like, hey, you know, you can, um, we need to give medical attention to these people, but we can't come in there if you guys are acting wrong. So, you know, we can come and get you, but if we come and get you, we're taking you out of this situation and then you're going to be escorted by, you know, people who want to make sure that you're not misbehaving anymore. So some of that comes into play and all of this would finally blow over where everybody calmed down and we could address grievances and we could go in and, you know, start making things right. You know, we restore peace, restore order. Uh, and we would have to go through and kind of do an audit as to why did this happen? Um, was this something we, as you know, the corrections environment did wrong? Or was this something that, you know, we had some bad actors who spun some people up 
And if it's we had some bad actors who sponsor people up, we can identify those bad actors and send them someplace else, sometimes even out of state if, and that, that's like a big, big deal to send somebody out of state. Um, but, you know, there's interstate compact and a lot of that. Um, but a lot of it would come down to is, hey, you know, this institution you're too familiar with and we're going to send you someplace else. And where we send you, you know, you're going to have access to a lot less privileges because you didn't act right. Uh, you know, we go through, watch cameras, you know, identify people who were, you know, real rabble rousers and things like that. But uh, basically the, the big deal behind a lot of this was um, we would have to do an audit as to why this why this happened, what what was being done wrong, and we would go in and, and address it. And that's something that um, you know a lot of people don't like the correction setting. A lot of people don't like the people who work in corrections, things like that. But the the crazy part of a lot of this is that you would have individuals who um, were doing what I would do because I I had the benefit of to quote the title of one of the books that I've read, the, the Heart and the Fist. I had the benefit of being the fist, but my day job for that was being the heart of things. And so um, I'd go <laughs> I'd go rough somebody up and, you know, and not like intentionally harm them or anything like that, but I'd go uh, lay hands on somebody and remove them from a situation. Um, and they usually were not happy about that. And then um, very well could be me, a day or two later sitting down and like, Hey, what's wrong? Talk to me. You know, do we need to make some phone calls to some people? Do we need to get you some of your property replaced? Um, here are the forms for you to navigate. And so you could essentially have the, the hard side of things where, uh, you know, iron fist and then days later getting the velvet glove of making sure that, that person's okay. Um, the other part of corrections is you could have a situation where you're going in and you are um, laying hands on somebody and forcefully removing them from a situation. And that person comes to harm, not from anything that the staff members did, but due to somebody else. And, you know, you were just laying hands on that person with intent to remove them from the situation and take them somewhere under custody control and, you know, maintain safety. Uh, and then you're having to apply first responder medical aid to that individual. Uh, and it could be a situation where they attacked a staff member. And, you know, regardless of whatever feelings you have, you're having to make sure that they're okay. Uh, and that takes, you know, a little bit different. You know, you're talking about individuals who um, are on the one-sided thing and they're not worried about um, the other person like their job is just making sure that their guys are okay and you know I'm not trying to say that corrections is superior in any way because it's not it's just a different animal um, is that corrections is having to maintain safety for everybody whereas you know some some people they're in situations where they're only having to maintain safety for their unit their guys their people uh, and that's that's something that um, is very respectable in the corrections side of things. And uh, being able to uh, go through and, and have an audit, hey, what did we do wrong? What, what, what did we do right? What can we improve? Uh, being able to maintain the order that was there and make sure that these kind of things don't happen again. And hey, are there bad actors mixed in here that we need to go and sort things out and remove them from the situation? Are they going to, you know, come back two weeks later and try this again? Uh, so that, you know, there's a lot that, that would play into the, the restructuring after um, a situation like that. And uh, like I said, I don't have the rebuilding the uh, the Galactic Empire after the Rebel Alliance takes over. Um, but I do have the, the, I guess, past experiences of seeing the audit of uh, how the situations were handled and what led up to the situation and how can we prevent this from ever happening again. Um, on the note of the planning preparedness cycle, this is something that I just 
I liked, and this is where the rant is probably going to be, so anyone who's curious. But the once a plan is formulated, it becomes part of the preparedness cycle. The cycle has several activities. Plan, organize, equip, train, exercise, and evaluate, and improve. This cycle, or a similar method, is vital to understanding and improving potential resistance and thus increasing national resilience. So I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. Uh, we don't train enough. Nobody. This is whether you're at a yogurt shop. This is whether you're a police officer. This is whether you are a preparedness minded individual. This is, um, you know, if you're a teacher, if you are um, a janitor, if you are the president of the United States. I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, I don't care how you get your paycheck. Um, we do not train enough. Um, and how that starts is we need to have plans. And we have, okay, these are the things that could go wrong, these are the things that could go right, you know, whatever. And we need to have contingencies based off of, all right, if this happens, then this is the plan. Um, we need to organize behind that. We need to make sure that we are, okay, what all is it going to take for us to address this situation? Um, and then obviously we need to equip people. And sometimes that's knowledge. Sometimes that's skill sets. Sometimes that is um, physical equipment. Sometimes that is having things that um, are combinations of all of those. Sometimes it's having subject matter experts who are schooled up and, and ready to communicate information because sometimes not everyone can have all of the information at their fingertips for various reasons. <coughs> and then we need to train. And I, I'm serious that this is something that I saw all the time. And I've talked about this um, for a very, very long time in my professional career. <coughs> but it amazed me that we would send people to training for a little while. And this is, this would be in retail sales. This would be in corrections. This would be, um, in, you know, a, a theme park that I worked at. This would be in, uh, oh, this would be in the oil field when I was working. We'd send people to training for a very brief window and then they considered everything else on the job training. And that just really, really rubbed me the wrong way. And yes, there's a certain amount of on the job training that needs to happen, but, we need to be bringing people back um, to a semi-training environment where managers need to get with employees and supervisors need to get with managers uh, and just run a scenario real quick. And this could be at the beginning of the day in the yogurt shop when nobody um, is around. It's like, hey, um, you need to grab the cup of yogurt and fill it up to a certain amount and, and weigh it. Um, and then tell me you know, what this is. We're going to run this transaction. I'm going to hand you money. You're going to give me a proper change back. So like, you do that transaction a thousand times in a yogurt shop or, hey, we're working in a furniture store and we're going to move this piece of furniture from here to here. And we're going to make sure that we're not going to hit any corners. We're going to go around this wall over here, go through this doorway, tip it up and put it in the furniture truck. And then we're going to get it out of the furniture truck and then go back through the other way and set it down. Um, or here's the oil field situation. We are going to take this 30 foot section of pipe. We're going to put dope on the threads. Um, we're going to grab the uh, mechanical tongs, we're going to pick it, pick that pipe up, we're going to swing it over to the hole, we're going to have the uh, the drill set the mechanical, or have the drill set the pipe into the hole, and then we're going to grab the tongs again, we're going to set it and torque it, go, and then the drill is going to grab it and start drilling down. We're going to do that five or six times, and you're going to talk me through every single one of these steps. Make sure you know it through and through. Oh, hey, the mechanical tongs break. Do you know how to do a chain whip? Can you grab it? Which hand do you grab the chain with? How do you fling it? How much chain do you need to have dangling out? Then which motor do you hook it up to? Which button do you press? Can you talk me through how to do this by hand? Oh, hey, the chain's broke. Can you grab an actual chain wrench that is totally separate? <laughs> and torque this by yourself. Have you done it? Um, you know, can you run the pressure washer? Uh, you know, in the correction setting, can you, with your off hand, grab your radio and push the button and call the appropriate 10 code and have individuals come to your your side right now and wait a second before you did any of that. You push the button, 
take a breath, count to one, and then make your radio call. So that way your transmission is actually clear. Then can you grab your cuffs with your hand, uh, maybe your off hand because you're having to do other things? And can you apply your cuffs one-handed to where the locks are facing in the appropriate way and double lock it one-handed? Can you do that? Because maybe you're using the other hand to subdue somebody. Think about that. Can you still sweep an environment and make sure everything's good? Can you do a cell search? Um, can you do the appropriate paperwork? Can you actually grab that form and fill it out? Um, like if you're working in a gun shop, can you grab the 4473? And can you talk somebody through without looking at the form line by line? Hey, this is how you fill this out appropriately when it's asking for county and not country. So instead of writing USA, you actually write what county you're in. Can you tell me that, hey, this is, you know, you put your name here, you put your address here, you put your you know, social security here, if you don't want to put your social security number, it is optional, but it will take more time to do so. Um, can you read the entirety of the boxes all the way through? Because these boxes sometimes have questions that are a little bit tricky. And if you just read the first couple of words and check one of these boxes over here, you may check an answer that you didn't really mean to check. And if you check that answer that you didn't really mean to check and it counts against you, then I have to deny the sale. So read, read, read this all the way through. And then when it says signature and you sign, you do not keep going past those boxes. You don't collect $200, you don't pass go. So, you know, things like that. Um, can you actually have your people talk you through a training situation? You know, I really like what Jocko um, talks about is about how um, I'd rather have eight people who are trained than 10 people who are not trained. And so if we could do like some kind of rotation where 20% of our time is just training to make everybody better, like hey, on, on the side of things where you're doing social work, everybody who's a social worker, can we get together for a little while? We're going to go through this one form right here that we all do all of the time. These are my exact forms that I am dealing with. Now, here's the situation, here's the person, here is what's going on with that person, here's what this person needs, here's what this person says they need, here is all of the cir circumstances. All right, everybody, we're gonna talk through this one right now. Here is this person's complaint. Here is how we're going to address the complaint. We're all on the same page, we're exchanging ideas, we're working together with our knowledge. So it really doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, what it matters is, is that everybody is actually, you know, getting a little bit of practice in. And th those kind of things don't take much time. You know, if you really want to get crazy, um, maybe we're going to incorporate a little bit of fitness into some of this. Hey, you know, in this correction setting, can you do 10 jumping jacks before you make your radio call? Take a breath, count to one, then say what your radio call is. Tell the people who you are, where you are, what you need, why you need it. Very quickly, clearly, and concisely, and say, hey, get here now location at the very least tell me where you are because if i don't know how, where to come get you you know th these are the kind of things that um i you know i just I severely think that there is a big big lack in training out there and i'm not asking you know i would love to do jocko's thing but i'm not asking for people to spend days and days and days but we need to regularly be bringing people back and practicing and that you know leads into the actual exercises of things we can you know block everything out and just hey we're going to run a big scenario this is going to take us 30 minutes and then we're going to debrief afterwards so let's say an hour and a half because uh, we got to set it up a little bit maybe we're going to run it a couple of times and then we're going to talk about it um, so that way we can all learn from the situation. Uh, and then, hey, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? How can we improve? Those kind of training situations are so, so vital to actually being prepared because then when the situation happens, somebody's like, oh, I've done this. We have a plan, we're organized. We are equipped, we have trained for this, we have done actual live exercises on this, and then we've talked about what we did right and wrong, so that way I'm not repeating these mistakes. I have done this. That, that to me, is a feeling that I would love everybody to be able to have, and I'm not, I don't feel like I'm asking for too much, but people are like, oh, we can't give up the time. It's like, I don't see how you can not do those kind of things because then you have people who are so unprepared you know they're being released from whatever their training is at the yogurt shop usa or whatever 
um, or the furniture store or the oil rig or corrections or you know selling insurance or, or whatever give people experience you know you talk about on um, job listings hey we want you to have this much education and this much experience if, if we are not giving people actual real experiences through training um, where the stakes don't matter as much but we're giving people opportunities to really learn because um, this on the job training you may not even know what you're getting into when you're on the job and you've got to mess up enough to where you've ruined some things but hey then you know we didn't even really get a chance to talk about this versus hey training situation failed but this is why I failed this is what I can do right now we're gonna run it again we're gonna run it again until we do it right and then after we get it, get it right then we're gonna continue running it until we do it wrong so that way we know where our breaking points are and those are some things that I'm passionate about I really am uh, but yeah train on the conditioning side of things you're gonna get up in the morning and go run you're gonna get up and do push-ups. I, you know, I was just talking to my wife about this. I actually haven't done um, a whole lot of real upper body work in the last few days, and that's just something that I need to get on. So, you know, I've done some calisthenics here and there a little bit, but I need to really spend some time on some upper body. So, that's something that I'm gonna address, and it is what it is, and I'm not gonna let that hold me back. And I've learned from my mistakes and move on. But yeah. Go do hard things.